Today I'm going to introduce you to a completely amazing KE70 build that's just going to blow you away. This is an aerodynamic K70 built for endurance racing, or rather it's being built. This project is in motion, but I needed to introduce it to you. I needed to show you what is going on here because it's just completely off the scale. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is when you see crazy aero in Thailand, in ASEAN, or really across Asia, usually it's because people have seen it in books, in magazines, on TV. They've seen Super GT in Japan and they've copied it. This has been done by an aerodynamicist to work. It's designed for endurance racing. This guy, Gong, he races KE70s in Thailand in Toyo Series. His wife races KE70s as well. They are passionate about this car. He is fusing classic old car technology with modern ideas. This aero is all designed to work. The underfloor has all been designed to move the air through, to maximize the airflow. The car has been fabricated. It's actually been built from a four door to a two door. It's been refabricated there. And the weight has to come up by more than 100 kilos to meet the regulations. So he's added the weight into the car as he's built it. Today, I'm going to look at the aero on this car, go round it, because when I take you to the back and you see the long tail on it, it's going to blow you away completely. And it's got a Lamborghini wing off a Super Trofeo. Anyway, I'm going to take you through the aero. I want to look at the suspension, the drivetrain, the brakes, and the fuel system. It's going to get a turbo engine, it's going to get a sequential gearbox, we'll talk about that another day. Now it's got an engine in it to go testing. The final engine is being built, so I'm not going to even pull the bonnet up today, I'm just going to talk about the aero. But I'm actually not going to talk about it myself, because if you watch my videos, you know I am not a technical guy. So Gong, he's an aerodynamicist, he's designed this car. I'm going to get him to talk you through this car get through the parts I've mentioned because it's going to blow you away what is going on here. Hi, my name is Gong. I've been raising this KE70 for a few years with my wife and all my friends. And now we move to race in an endurance series. So as I'm an aero guy, we try to put a lot of aero into the car. The most difficult part is it's an old car to make sure that all the aero that we put into the car is working right. And got a lot of people ask me, why do I build this KE70? It actually from my mom. My mom used to drive this car every day to drop us to school. And um, I've seen the car sitting around when I came back from New Zealand, then um, I think it will be a good idea to bring it back and restore it and to make it to be able to, to drive it on the track again. And um, I think I, I drove it on the track for a couple years now and I love it. So I start to put more money to make the car more competitive. So we start with the, the front, actually Pican Gan Fiber. He handcraft this to make the car wider by four inches. We have to make sure that it look okay and still look like KE70. So I try to keep the headlight and the grill pretty much the same so people know it's KE70. The splitter is about 30 centimeter forward. The reason why is that we try to drive the flat floor more. That's why we have the center section so the air, it acts like a vacuum cleaner. The air will go into the center part quicker because it's got low pressure area and it moves under the, the flat floor and then it drives the flat floor to the diffuser. With the side, so everyone talking about our wash and down wash now. So with the side skirt, we have to make sure that the air not get into the flat floor. That's why we have to bring it out and then have the edge up, edge down to seal the floor 
so the, the air from the side not get into the flat floor and so, so we're gonna have the batch board here so, so the idea is to get the air out wash from the wheel so on the rear we have to extend it about six inches wider to so make sure that we accommodate the bigger wheel size and ties we still have the wheels back so it seal the whole wheels on the back so it apparently it decreased the drag by 15 percent and also we extended the rear part about 25 centimeter longer so i can move the rear diffuser back to the end by moving the diffuser back by 25 centimeter it make the flat area more the flat floor can drive the diffuser harder when it come out at the back and also make sure that the air won't turbulence back to the rear it will suck the car down more and to help that we actually lucky enough to have the Lamborghini Super Trofeo I think it's Hulakan Super Trofeo Evo so the wings actually come from a friend the reason why I have to make the car stronger let's say I, I, I put 100 kilogram of steel bar in to make the chassis stronger to be able to land a bigger wheels and tires uh, we, we have to up the size to 17 and land to 75 40 17 now um, to, to make the car had more traction and to be able to accommodate the bigger wheels and tires we have to widen the body quite a bit I think we, we make it 4 inch wider on each side and we have to drop the chassis down about 3 inch so we can keep the same right height because we, ha we have to land the flat floor to have more traction on the KE70 as you know they don't have much traction uh, most people will probably not staying with solid axle we try to I think we stub on and keep it that we can still run the solid axle um, to be able to do that we have to carve some of the chassis rail out and drop the chassis to the right height that we want I think we, we are keeping at 3 inch from the ground uh, as you know the solid axle will have to move up the whole rear end including the diff and the drive shaft and um, we have to move the top link to the top of the diff so we can make it triangulated um, it stop the solid axle to move left and right if we are landing the, the exact right height it's not going to move side, left or right at all so I think we, we hope that this should work it's the same as the NASCAR do because we are going to turbocharge this engine so we have to try the biggest solid diff center that Toyota have we try to keep it Toyota and we use the Toyota Super center diff the JZA 70s TRD diff and we actually measure the size of the diff and the dive shaft so we can use the LH112 uh, solid rear end and so the, the drive shaft and everything is 2 inch wider than AE86 that's why um, we have to make the body wider to accommodate the diff and drive shaft so don't, we don't have to cut and join them so it's stronger that way we actually move the B pillar back by 6 inches so we can put the coupe door in it by actually we are quite lucky we don't have to change any roll cage at all by moving that uh, P, uh, B pillar back 6 inches we can make the rear end body a lot easier because we don't have to worry about the back door at all we just craft the whole 
piece is on top of the old body. Just make sure it's strong enough. We, we try to keep the fuel tank about 50 liter because we are running the E85. Um, we get the fabricator to make the partition fuel tank. As you can see, it lifts up quite a bit because we have to move it up by four inches. The car weighed 911 kilograms. The minimum weight in the class is 1200 kilograms with the driver. So we have to put quite a bit of weight into the car. And we actually try to make sure that the weight we put in, we put it in the center as much as possible and also as low as possible so we can get the polar moment of inertia in the middle. Just make sure that the car will handle nicely with the weight down low and in the center. As you know, I'm the aero guy and anything that interfere with my flat floor, I have to move the whole exhaust system up inside the cabin and we have to box it out so it's not hot and it moves out on the passenger side. This time we're putting the 5S FE block and 2.2 liter turbocharged with the pedal shift HGT sequential gearbox and compete with we probably gonna run a bit lower final drive to make it use the turbo power more better